Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Talking about the book GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master by Dana Hain. It's been called a contemporary everyman's search for truth. Finding one center and inner guide is essential on the road called life. In the book, the author, Dana Hain, takes us along at her global travels and real-life experiences of living communally for 13 years with a 100-year-old sage from the jungles of Sri Lanka as she discovers the awakening of that inner guide. Dana is a retired labor and delivery and maternity nurse. She received a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, graduating magna cum laude. She lived and studied alongside a spiritual leader from Sri Lanka for 13 years until his passing in 1986. She still returns and goes to Brazil, taking medical tour guides there. She volunteers with the chaplaincy and hospice services in her community hospital. She lives with her husband for more than 40 years in the suburbs of Philadelphia, and she's with us on Skype today on This Week in America. Dana, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Hi, Rick. Good to be with you, too. Looking forward to talking about this book, and there is so much wisdom involved in this, thus the title, GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master. Let's go back and talk about the inspiration for writing this book. I mentioned briefly the, the journey that you've been on throughout your life. Where did the inspiration for the book come from? It came from, Rick, there were several um, threads with that. The first one was that my teacher, Bal Mahayadeen, actually asked that those that were his students um, write uh, their experiences of being with him. And um, after he died, I asked myself, what did he ask me to do that I haven't done? And that was one of them. And the other motivation was, while when I first met him, he said that the tree of wisdom was planted in the east, but the fruit fell to the west. And he said what was happening, he, he had to come to the west because there was back in the 70s, it was, this is what the beginning of this, uh, young people were searching and they really wanted truth and understanding and they weren't getting answers um, from their religions and from their communities and whatnot. So kids were starting to um, get involved in drugs, alcohol, intoxicants, and even false gurus. And so he said it was really essential to come and teach that thread of inner wisdom. Thus, the book we're talking about on the program, GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master, Dana Hain, H-A-Y-N-E, is the author and our guest. Her website is GPS4, the number four, uh, thesoulbook.com. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to, uh, to Dana's website. I want to go back to where this all began for you. You're age three, and you're finding peace and tranquility in life with, with Peter Rabbit. Talk about that, because as I'm reading that, it sort of takes us all back to a time when things were real simple before all these conflicting messages came rushing towards us in life. Talk about that, the serenity that you felt at that time, and how that really began this journey to find out who you actually are. Well... When I was three, my, I was a military family, and we were stationed down in the Panama Canal. And every day, it was really hot, so every day my mom would put her little girls down for naps. And um, I wasn't tired, so I would just lie there, and I had my little Peter Rabbit with me. And somehow, the only way I can describe it, Rick, is that I would kind of lead into this experience. It was a memory of a presence of safety and knowing that was so pervasive and, and comforting. And as I got older, I forgot that. And um, actually later when I met Bao, he actually said that children up into the age of about three remember um, uh, the realms from, from which they came before here. And um, the goal for us ideally is to remember that true essential self which is peaceful and um, loving and kind and so that's where that began and I didn't even you know it kind of went underground for a while because what happens to us is 
as we're going along, people begin attaching different identities to us. Yes. You're good, you're bad, you're this, you're that, you're, you know, you're fat, you're thin, you're... And so we, all these graphs start to take over. And Bali used to say that what we had to do was, with our wisdom, cut those graphs off and get back to the essential rootstock of our being. So that's the journey, and I wanted to do that, but I didn't know how. Dan and Mahane is our, our guest in the program, talking about her book, GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master. When working with Bawa, when, and we'll talk in a second about who he is and the uh, dramatic impact he had on you and, and so many people. Were you able, as the journey progressed here, to, to go back and find that three-year-old Dana again? Have you been able to, to recapture sort of that, uh, that bliss that you felt at that time? You know, Rick, it's incredible that you asked me that because I, I am finally, <laughs> really, it's, becoming, it's not an intellectual concept for me anymore. It's becoming very personal. And part of that, I mean, I recently went on a what's called an illuminated tour with a group to Turkey, and we went to different Sufi sites. And the whole focus of the trip was what the guide Omitsati called radical love. And somehow I've been able to really go inside myself. One day I was like driving home from the airport and I thought it was dark. And I said, well, I'm alone. And this voice inside said, oh, is that true? <laughs> you really think yes. you're alone? And I went, oh, no. And it was like. Bali used to always say, we have to learn to see through God's eyes and hear through God's ears. And that we have these physical eyes, but we have inner ones. And what's beginning to happen to me is seeing through those inner eyes. And that comes from the heart. It's not from the intellect. So um, I'm just hopeful that it continues to expand because it feels a lot better when you, when you feel loving. <laughs> Well, and you're sharing that with, with people now and touching a number of people. I, the reviews are excellent. One said how she learned to let go of everything to follow her spiritual path is an inspiration to me. So you're not only, you reignited that feeling not only for yourself, but for other people as well. The book, GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master. I want to go back to the introduction when I talk about you lived communally for 13 years with a 100-year-old sage from the jungles of Sri Lanka, discovering awakening in that inner guide. How did you get involved in that where you were in that position to, uh, to receive this information and find out about yourself? Talk about how, how that all began for you. Well, as soon as I could get away from my conditioning, my home life, I kind of took off. And first I went to the Virgin Islands looking for whatever. I wasn't sure what I was looking for. Didn't find it there, came home, was very dissatisfied, and then I went to Israel where I hoped to have a reawakening, and I lived for a year on a kibbutz there and toured all different parts of Israel, um, the Dead Sea, the Matzada, all of it. And I came back really discouraged because I didn't have that awakening inside. And then I went to live with my sister in upstate New York, Woodstock, and there was the great guru invasion at that time. Yes. And I was looking for a guru, but I did um, meet somebody in a health food store who said, listen, I have a teacher down in Philadelphia. Do you want to come with me? And I said yes. And um, my first meeting with him was just so... Rick, I can't begin to tell you what it's like being with a being who is free of judgment and anger and resentment and all those negative qualities. And he could read my mind, which freaked me out at first. I can and, imagine, yes. But I could also see that he could see, all, you know, we all kind of hide parts of ourselves that we think other people won't like. Exactly. But he could see all those parts I and mean, he still loved me. That bound for me. It was like he was giving me back my purity and my innocence. And he had a peacefulness about him that was so 
palpable. And when he started talking about peace of mind, I said, that's what I've been looking for my whole life. How do you get it? <laughs> yes. And then he started talking about wisdom. And I said, wait a minute. People have talked to me about faith, but nobody's talked to me about wisdom. And we all know that you can have do a lot of stupid things with blind faith. And he continued to talk about the need to develop this level of consciousness called wisdom. And that was the beginnings. I moved down to Philadelphia and I stayed there um, for all those years. Talk about when you hear his words, that's one thing, but you actually work on his words, you implement his words, and you start seeing uh, a difference. You, you feel something different. Talk about going through that experience where it's like, okay, this is not just words that I'm hearing f from him. I really feel the impact of those words. Well, you know, I, I actually am pretty, it's pretty, um, what's the revealing? It's kind of hard. I actually gave examples of that in the book where I walked into his room one day and all of a sudden, and it's rare that he was alone and in, you were alone in his room. And all of a sudden, I go, is he talking to me? And he said, you know, child, words spoken with anger and haste are, shoot, are like shooting somebody with a gun. When the bullet goes in, it makes a small hole. But when it comes out the other side, it makes a huge hole. And I was like, okay. And I'd never seen a gunshot wound. And that night on TV, I see this detective thing. They show the little tiny bullet hole, and they turn the body over, and there's this back of the brain's gone and I thought about it and I said you know how many times in my marriage have I thought that I'm only saying a little thing and my words would sing into my husband and I thought they were something small but they would go into him and it would just you know I wondered why he was like <laughs> moving farther away from me you know yes and I had, it was the beginnings of my understanding how crucial it is to, um, to think before we speak. And then a little bit later, I went to Bao and I told him, you know, sometimes I don't speak my true feelings. And I thought he was going to say, good, you didn't shoot people with the gun. You didn't argue and fight, you know. But he said, no, that's a huge sin. I said, what? He said, you must learn to speak the truth with patience or flush it in the toilet. And I sat there thinking about all the times I'd had a difference with somebody and I think, well, I'll talk later and later comes and you think it's too nice to um, bring up these subjects now, so you don't and then they do that thing again and then you erupt. And he leaned over, he said, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Learn to speak the truth with patience. And Rick, I think this is a message for the whole world. Yes. Because so many people don't know how, they don't know what they need, and they don't know how to ask for it. And so I'm like, we need more diplomats. Don't throw the bomb. Don't build the wall. Talk. Learn to talk to each other. Like you're, you know, like this experience. Yes. So it's so important for us to learn to speak, again, our true feelings diplomatically. It's interesting because words sometimes, we say something without really giving it a lot of thought, and saying something is fine, you're saying, if there's some patience, some forethought involved in what the words are, rather than just words coming out of your mouth, take time to, to, to form those words, to think them through before you say something. Absolutely. And I don't know if you're aware of a man named Marshall Rosenberg. He wrote, um, he was responsible for developing a methodology called nonviolent communication. Okay. And he would go into Israel, Palestine and get people together in communities who had murdered family members and get them talking. He would go into Rwanda with the Hutus and the Tutsis and get them talking together rather than continuing to fight with each other. And I started implementing that methodology internally, you know, so that I could learn to speak my truth more patiently because sometimes we don't realize you can even speak in a soft tone, but your words can just be very cutting. 
Dana, so. Dana Hain is our, our guest on the program. The book is GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master, been called the contemporary every man's search for truth. The book's available wherever books are sold. Of course, you'll find it at Amazon. Dana's website is GPS, the number four, the soul book.com. Link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can get information on, uh, on Dana's book. What do you hope, and time is going by way too quickly, this has been fascinating. What do you hope that, that readers take away from the book? What are, what are some of the, uh, uh, the key points that, that reader, you hope, and I've read some of the reviews, and, and obviously the, the message is getting across. What do you hope we get out of the book? Well, I hope that um, two, two things. One of them, I hope that people will be um, interested enough to go to the source, which is to borrow all the books and tapes and videos that Bala has left behind because he's the master. And hopefully they will learn to, well, the truth is wisdom can come in any form, not just through him, but I hope that people will um, go inside and learn to develop that level of wisdom. What's coming to mind here is something Bao used to say. He said, you know, a baby drinks milk for its nourishment, but when it gets teeth, it needs food. And he said, like that, when people are spiritually young, they need religion. But when they begin to mature, they need wisdom. So there are a lot of people out there who really are frustrated because the religions aren't nurturing them doesn't and you would never take that you wouldn't take food from a baby so the religions are not wrong they just aren't digging deep enough for some people and for people then to now understand that they have to redirect their search towards the development of that level of consciousness you know development is an interesting word and i'm thinking as i'm i'm listening to your talk and and reading the book gps for the soul wisdom of the master it's a it's an evolutionary process and i i get the impression that that your tomorrow will be different than today this is an ongoing process for you it's not something you read okay i just did that i'm moving on with my life now this is a, an evolution isn't it absolutely and I, there's a phrase that I love, you can never get it wrong because you can never de- get it done because all that is is constantly expanding. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so it's a constant. And one of the things Bao used to say, he said, you know, God doesn't have a form. So how can you know God? And he said, you can only know God through his qualities. And he would off when people would come to him, they'd gone down this path, that path, this path, yoga, you know, um, what, whatever. He said, I'm like a policeman, and I've been down all those um, paths, and I'm directing you to the shortest path, and the way is through the heart. And if you develop those qualities of kindness and justice and equality and discard from you all those negative qualities, then you will merge with that, that thing that we call all that is God, whatever name you have for it. And that always made sense to me because, you know, uh, well, it's a different understanding of reality, I guess. Yes, and I would encourage people to read the book, GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master. Dana Hain is the author. Uh, it's spelled H-A-Y-N-E, if you're, you're looking that up. The website is GPS for the number four, thesoulbook.com. Book's available at Amazon. You'll find information available to kind directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. A minute or so left in the program, you mentioned that we're always, seems like we're searching for something, and it falls in that fad category. Maybe for a while it's like, okay, this is great, and three months later you tire of it, you're looking for something else to, to follow. What you have is really life-lasting, isn't it? This is something that's been with you for years and continues to grow and, and nourish you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, but the one, at one caveat I can say for people is that, um, Bob used to say, when you plant a tree when it's young, if you don't surround it with a fence, the cows and the goats and the sheep will come and and eat it down. So like that, when you're spiritually young and searching, you need to put a fence of a community around it. And so I would highly recommend that people find a community that resonates with them 
it doesn't matter if it's Buddhist, Jewish, Christian, whatever. But we need the solidarity of like-minded people. And people feel so cut off nowadays that um, until you're rooted in your uh, inner wisdom, you need that um, support. Yeah, and it's so frightening because we're probably divided more and cut off more now than ever in the history of the the country. And a book like this is so important, which is why it's it's resonating with so many people. The book is GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master. The author is Dana Hain, D-A-N-A-H-A-Y-N-E. The website is very simple, GPS, the number four, thesoulbook.com. It's available, of course, at Amazon, and you can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I know you've been working with the Reader's Magnet on this project to take the, uh, the book and to get it out and to share the message with, with many people. What has that experience been like for you? It's, it's, it's actually been very good. In the beginning, I wasn't quite sure because they reached out to me. I was like, well, gee, I don't know. I've already done a little bit of this, but I must say I've developed um, a fondness, and I'd actually like to see their faces for the two individuals that have been helping me from Reader's Magnet. And I I feel like I, I know them, and um, I just like to know them a little bit more so I can connect with them and thank them for helping me with this. It's nice when you have professionals that you can let take the job of, of getting the getting your product, getting your art to the marketplace, and you can sort of uh, uh, be the author, the artist part of it, and the, the business part you turn over to somebody else. I'm sure that's been a, a rewarding experience that you can do what you do best, they do what they do best. Absolutely. And um, Brennan understood that from the beginning for me because I told him, I said, listen, I, you know, this is not my forte, this business part. And um, he has made helped me make different decisions and switching up my approach to things in a way that will facilitate um, me being able to do what I do well and let them do what they do well. Well, and what you do well is, is write and to share the wisdom. The book, once again, is GPS for the Soul, the Wisdom of the Master. Dana Hain, our guest on the program. The time has gone by way too quickly. Hopefully we'll have a chance to do this again. So much more to talk about. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Thank you, Rick. I really appreciated the opportunity. So thank you. Well, I've learned something in the past uh, 20 minutes we've been talking. This is always good when I can learn something at the end of the day, and you will as well from the book, GPS for the Soul, Wisdom of the Master. You're listening to This Week in America, information available on the book and Dana's website. You can link on to directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us.